Hello everyone and welcome to the second video on relationships between two quantities. In this video, I will take up the topic of direct superposition, which is the simplest kind of relationship that we see between two quantities. Direct superposition problems are problems where there are two quantities whose values are related such that if the value of one of them increases or decreases by a certain amount, the value of the other quantity also increases or decreases by the same amount. So for example, if the value of one of the quantities goes up by 2, the value of the other quantity goes up by 2 as well. And if the value of one of the quantities goes down by 5, then the value of the other quantity also goes down by 5. So they both increase or decrease by the same amount. The equation for direct superposition comes in two forms. The standard form is one where Q2 is equal to a constant plus Q1. A constant has a fixed value. The value may change from problem to problem. But for any given problem, the value is fixed. So for some problems, k may be 3.2. In some other problem, k may be 4.8. But whatever value it picks for a given problem, then that value will not change. Now, how is it that this equation captures the meaning of direct superposition problems? To give you an example of that, let's suppose that k happens to be 5. So now we have q2 is equal to 5 plus q1. Now, let's say that q1 is 4, in which case q2 will be 9. Now we are going to increase the value of q1 by 2. And because we are adding 2 more, the total also goes up by 2. So q2 becomes 11. This argument holds no matter how you change q1. You can increase the value of q1 by whatever amount that you want. And the value of q2 will also go up by the same amount. If you decrease the value of q1 by whatever amount that you want, the value of q2 will also go down by the same amount. This is somewhat obvious if you think about it because when you add q1, if you increase q1 by let's say 2 units, then you will be adding 2 more. And so the total q2 will also go up by 2. Now in this equation, k can take up any form that it wants. The key is that we are adding q1. So k could be negative k. It's still a constant. So if k is 2, negative k will be negative 2. And it's still a constant. It could be root k. It could be that we write q1 first. The key again is that q1 is being added we could have q1 minus k. This is still direct superposition because q1 is being added. We could have q1 plus root k. And we still have direct superposition relationship between q2 and q1 because q2 is being, uh, q1 is being added. Now, a second formulation for direct superposition, known as the conservation form, states that the two quantities, the values of them, are related such that the difference between them is constant. And if you think about it, that does make sense, because if you have two quantities and they both increase or decrease by the same amount, then the difference between them has to be constant. The conservation form has an equation that reads q2 minus q1 is equal to k. 
So the difference between the two values, Q2 minus Q1, is constant, is equal to K. The difference between the values of the two quantities is constant. And this is the conservation form. Now, of course, it is in the standard form that you add Q1. In the conservation form, K is isolated. In the standard form, one of the quantities is isolated. Note that the conservation form makes a lot of sense, because if the difference between Q2 and Q1 doesn't change, if it's constant, then in some sense that value is being preserved or conserved. Now sometimes students tell me that they find it confusing that in one form you add Q1, in the other form you subtract Q1. And this can be confusing. The best way to deal with that is to make sure you understand the standard form. And then you can easily change it into conservation form. In the standard form, one of the quantities is always isolated. And then we take a look at what happens to the other quantity. The statement k belongs to r means that k is a real number and its value is known fixed. We can also go from the standard form to the conservation form very easily. In the standard form, one of the quantities is isolated. In the conservation form, we need to isolate K because we need to show what it is that is being conserved, what it is that has a fixed value. And we can do this by taking plus Q1, add Q1, and move it over to the left and make it subtract Q1. A couple of properties of these kinds of equations of the relationships of type direct superposition. Number one, as far as the changes go, changes in the value of one of the quantities is always equal to the change in the value of the other quantity. That makes sense because we said that they both go up and down by the same amounts. The question of symmetry. If we know that Q2 is directly superpositional to Q1, does it also mean that Q1 is directly superpositional to Q2. To explain how the two of these are different, when we say Q2 is directly superpositional to Q1, we mean we change Q1 and see how Q2 gets affected by that. When we say Q1 is directly superpositional to Q2, it means we change Q2 and see how it affects Q1. So the question is, if I raise Q1 by 2 and Q2 goes up by 2, let's say I decrease Q1 by 5 and Q2 goes down by 5, and that pattern is always true for any number. Does it also work if I change Q2 and then have that same effect on Q1? If I bring Q2 up by 5, will Q1 also go up by 5? This is the question of symmetry. And the answer is yes, symmetry does exist. Uh, for direct superposition. We can show this as follows. Suppose we know that Q2 is directly superpositional to Q1. That means Q2 is equal to K plus Q1 with K being a real number. Now we can rearrange this and solve for Q1. Switch sides. Then plus K moves over becomes minus K. And you notice that this equation has the form of direct superposition for the reason that if k is in R, if k is a known number, then so is negative k. So negative k is a constant. And we have the same form. The value of one of the quantities is equal to a constant plus the value of the other quantity. And that means that q1 is directly superpositional to q2. 
So if I know that increasing Q1 by 5 will force Q2 to go up by 5, then I don't have to wonder about it. I also know that if I increase Q2 by 5, then Q1 will go up by 5. So symmetry does exist. As an example of a problem uh, that's direct superposition, where we have the relationship of type direct superposition, we have the equation for the conversion of unit of temperature from kelvins to degrees Celsius and vice versa. And this equation is as follows. With capital T by convention representing temperature in kelvins, lowercase t is the temperature in degrees Celsius, and capital T with subscript zero is the freezing point of water in kelvins. The equation is capital T is equal to T0 plus T. Uh, and T0 is a constant. Its value is always 273.15 kelvins. And if you think about it, this equation does have the form of direct superposition because you can compare it to Q2 equals K plus Q1. Here Q2 is temperature in kelvins. K is the constant 273.15 and Q1 is temperature in degrees Celsius. So now I can tell the following. I can tell that an increase or decrease in the value of temperature in degrees Celsius forces an increase or decrease in the value of temperature in kelvins by the same amount. And it works the other way by symmetry. If I change the value of T, if I increase T, let's say, capital T, by let's say 5 kelvins, then temperature goes up by 5 degrees Celsius. This I understand because I know that the equation has the form of direct superposition. I can also tell that the difference between the two units is fixed. The difference between temperature in kelvins and temperature in degrees Celsius is always equal to T0, which is a constant. And this comes from the conservation form. All of that information you can get from this formula by just looking at it. And by the way, the fact that the, the value of temperature in kelvins and degrees Celsius go up by the same amount or go down by the same amount means that a change of one degree Celsius is the same as a change of one Kelvin. So the size of the unit degree Celsius is the same as the uh, size of the unit Kelvin. Okay, everyone, this is the end of this video. And in the next video, I will talk about the next simplest kind of relationship that we see. Those are inverse superposition problems. Take care and see you soon.